Many of you Christians heard it before. Actually, probably all of you have heard it before. That is, that it is by grace through faith that we're saved. This not of ourselves, not by works, lest anyone should boast. And so what a lot of people do, they read that and they hear that and they think, well, we're saved by grace. We're saved by God's love. And it's not by works. In other words, we don't have to do anything right in order to be saved. It's not about anything we do, so we can do anything. We can live in any different, in any, with any, uh, any lifestyle. We can do anything, good or evil, and we're still saved. This is not what that scripture is talking about at all. You know, there's a lot of people that take that take this scripture to the extreme not only distort it not only misinterpret it but take it to the extreme in other words they say well you know it's not of works that we're not we're not saved by works we're only saved by by grace through faith the faith of jesus christ the faith of jesus as long as you have faith in christ as long as you believe in jesus you're saved that's what they say but that is not what the scripture teaches in and of itself, okay? James makes it very clear. It's not Abraham's faith alone that saved him. It was his faith plus his actions. He made it very, very clear in, in the book of James. Now, I know a lot of people say, well, you know, yeah, it's all God. It's just all Jesus. It's just all to do with him. You believe in Jesus and, and you have Jesus. It's just all him. And you know, saying that sounds so good. It sounds so right. It sounds so Christian. And in the way they say it, well, you know, it's got nothing to do with works of any human nature. It's, it's got nothing to do with anybody's works. It's all got to do with God. It's all got to do with Jesus. And, and once again, it sounds so good. But really, I mean, mo a lot of these people that say that, they say that out of one side of their mouth, you know, by grace are you saved through faith, not of works. Then on the other side of their mouth, they say, well, you have to confess Jesus as Lord. You have to say the sinner's prayer. You know, you have to, you have to actually believe in him. You got you to gotta say this out loud. You got to believe in your heart. So they got all this stuff mixed up. They say one thing and then they turn right around and say something that contradicts what they just said. Now, for example, and this is, this is something that I, I, I touched on in my previous video. Now, most people believe that you have to, I mean, it's just common sense. You, you have to hear the gospel before you believe the gospel. And in order to hear the gospel, somebody's got to preach the gospel to you. Now, preaching the gospel, I don't care. It doesn't matter what anybody says. Preaching the gospel is actually doing something. It is actually a work. You can't just fall asleep and preach the gospel to somebody in your sleep without doing something. Even in your dreams, you'll be doing something. It is a work, okay? Preaching the gospel to somebody is a work. So if somebody gets saved because they heard the gospel preached, and yet you say it's got absolutely nothing to do, absolutely with nobody's works anywhere, then you are just contradicting yourself because you're saying that, that you are saved by hearing the gospel and, and someone's got to preach it to you, so you're saved by someone else's works. Someone else's works. And you know, I, there's a lot of people that say, well, you know, that Jesus, it's all to do with what Jesus did at the, on the cross. Like it's his work on the cross. It's, it's, it's the work of, of the cross. But really, to be honest with you, the cross really didn't have much work at all to it. I mean, a, apart from Jesus himself carrying the cross, I mean, um, for him to be crucified, for him to be tried, he didn't even say anything in his defense. For him to be crucified, other people did it for him. <laughs> he didn't crucify himself. And I know a lot, of you, a lot of you might say, well, you know, Jesus said that I lay down my life. No one takes it from me. Well, yes, in a sense, yes. But yes, there had to have been someone to hammer those nails in his hands and in his feet, okay? There had to have been someone to crucify him. There had to have been someone to lift that cross up. There had to have been someone to condemn him to death. There had to have been someone to say crucify him. There had to have been someone to put him on trial. It involves work, okay? There's lots of work. There's lots of human work that is involved in salvation. So to take that scripture in Ephesians chapter 2 and completely just say, oh, it's got nothing to do with works at all. It's just got, I mean, you can do whatever you want in life. It's got nothing to do with any human involvement whatsoever. No human works. 
That is not true whatsoever. Okay, Paul was not talking about that. And this is the problem with most Christians. They take one little sound bite, they take one little verse, or they take one little passage here, one passage there, and they build a whole theology around it without actually looking at the entire so- scope of Scripture, without looking at the entire Bible. You look, for example, in Matthew 25, Jesus said very clearly how He would judge the world come Judgment Day, how He will judge everybody come Judgment Day. He said in Matthew 25, you know, there will be the sheep on His right-hand side, the goats on His left-hand side. He's, and and. The sheep are going to be judged according to their works. Not according, you know, he, he could have said, okay, he had, he had the perfect opportunity in Matthew 25 to say, well, you know, on that day, everybody's going to line up and I'm going to say to you, have you accepted me into your heart? Oh, you have? Well, congratulations, you're saved. Enter into the joy of the Lord. Oh, have you believed on me? Did you, did you believe on me? Oh, you didn't? Oh, okay, you're going to go to hell. Oh, what about you? Did you confess me as your Lord and Savior? Or did you just, do you believe on me? Oh, you do? Oh, that's great. You know, enter, that's not how it works. That is not how Jesus said it would happen. That is not the words in red. Okay, Jesus said in Matthew 25 that, that everyone will be judged by their works. I don't care what a high fluking, high, you know, famous preacher might say. I don't care what the most famous evangelist in the world may say. God sees your works, even if you are so called under the blood. God sees your works. He said to the church, not to the world, Revelation chapter 2 and 3, he said to the church, over and over and over again. He said, I see your works. I see your works. I know your works. I know your works. Repent or else. And that those, you know, the or else that he said were very serious consequences. I mean, obviously, you read some of those consequences that he's got for the church, for those who do not repent of their works. Doesn't sound like salvation to me. I mean, huh? <laughs> very serious things, okay? Jesus said very clearly, Matthew chapter 7, verses 21 to 23, that many will come to Him. Come to Him, okay? They must have faith in Him. They must believe in Him in order to come to Him, confessing, Lord, Lord, have we not, you know, here we, get, here we go again, they confess Him to be Lord. Have we not, you know, uh, cast out demons in your, in your name? Have we not prophesied in your name? Have we not done many mighty works in your name? And He said, well, who are you? I don't know you. Depart from me, you worker of iniquity. He pointed it out again. Iniquity, meaning evil deeds, evil works. You do bad things, you're not going to go to the good place. It's very, very simple. A child can understand it. It takes a corrupt seminary professor to deceive you otherwise, okay? It's not true. Jesus said very clearly, this is how you will be judged, okay? Now, the words in red should really stick out to you above the words of Paul, okay? Not that I'm saying that what Paul said is completely incorrect. Don't get me wrong. I'm saying what Peter said in 2 Peter chapter 3, that many people read or hear the gospel of Paul and they misinterpret it, they misunderstand it, and they twist it and they distort it to their own destruction because they continue in their sin instead of repenting from their sin. People need to stay clean and blameless unto that day, okay? And people, Peter very clearly said that people take Paul's words out of context. They misunderstand him, okay? Now, if Peter Peter said that. Here we, are, here we have Peter, the, the so-called the rock of the church, okay? If Peter said that, okay, how much more should we take that warning? Let's read the rest of the Bible first. Let's get everything else down first. Let's get the Tanakh down. Let's get the Torah, the Nevi'im, the Ketavim. Let's get the, 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 the law that, that came down uh, through Moses, down. Let's get, let's get that down first. Let's get the scriptures down first. The scriptures being 
the scriptures of the, uh, the Ketavim in the Old Testament, the writings, the historical writings, and the other writings. Let's get the Nevi'im, the prophets, down first. You know, Jesus said, all of the law and the prophets point to me. Let's get the words in red down first, the words of Jesus himself. Let's get the words of his three closest apostles down first, Peter, James, and John. After you get everything else down, after you get it all down and you master it, then, then start reading the letters of Paul, okay? Then you'll be able to understand it a little bit better, okay? Because Paul was writing in, if you, if you want to read it in context, you want to understand it in context, you must know the context of it. The context is more than just the verses surrounding a certain verse. It's more than just the chapters, the books. It's the whole culture that Paul wrote those letters in, a certain culture. You need to get that down first. Get first century Christianity down. Get Book of Acts Christianity down. Don't forget, okay? Yeah, it was Paul himself that said in, in Acts chapter 17 that get God commands all men everywhere to repent. God commands all men everywhere to repent. So that's just a little nugget for you to think about. So once again, thanks for watching. Don't forget to follow me. Don't forget to follow me on Twitter. Don't forget to add me on social media. Don't forget to keep an eye on this channel because new videos are added regularly. Thanks again for watching.